Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Shweta Goswami. Uh, I'm the director of Ziva Fertility. Uh, we are based out of Noida and Delhi NCR. Uh, one important topic that we patients keep asking, something that's very relevant to us, is what to expect after embryo transfer. Uh, of course, after IVF. So uh, it's a very important step. It's the day of implantation of the embryo inside the uterus, and uh, there are hundreds of questions that float in our mind. Uh, we, uh, you know, Google so much. There is uh, half information that we get. We're not really clear of what to do. Uh, a lot of people give us a lot of advices and instructions. Uh, so at least we can have a, a discussion about what is the scientific thing and what do we think uh, really matters. And are there any symptoms that you should be expecting after embryo transfer? Now, physiologically, if you talk about embryo transfer, it's the day the embryo is implanted into the uterus, and it, within a day or two, the embryo actually goes in and implants inside the uterus. It's just that we don't get to know anything because it's all microscopic, right? Uh, scientifically, again, it takes at least nine days uh, for the beta HCG to bare minimum come back as positive, because uh, that is the when the you know amount comes to a basic threshold where it can be actually uh, be detected by the present day blood test. However, typically, uh, if it's and, and I'm of course talking about a blastocyst transfer, which is a day five transfer, because on the blastocyst day, that day or the very next day, the embryo would implant and it would take another nine days. So actually, ten days post transfer is the first day that we could test. Typically, most uh, centers would test it with after 12, 13 days, just to be very sure that we're not testing very early uh, to detect whether pregnancy has happened or not. Now, we have to continue medicines which are very important for the pregnancy support at that time. Uh, the important, there are millions of questions as a patient bursting in our mind. Am I eating all right? Is this okay? So again, let's come to the scientific facts. Now, scientifically, 10 minutes is all the bed rest that is required after embryo transfer. After that, we can just get up, we can go to the washroom because it's the very first uh, question that people have. You know that, did I go to the washroom too early? I hope the embryos didn't slip out. So number one, nothing like that happens. There have been various scientific experiments done wherein they've actually put in uh, radio opaque balls, uh, you know, which simulate like an embryo and then taken uh, x-rays to see what happens to the embryo in case somebody coughs, in case they sneeze, in case they go to the washroom. And all the data shows nothing happens, right? The embryo just stays put there. It does not, it's, it's like, you know, stuck to the uterine cavity and therefore there's no way to come out. So number one, 10 minutes post, uh, you know, uh, tra at embryo transfer is good enough a bed rest that's required. However, just psychologically, most people would still say, okay, just lie down for an hour or two before you actually go home uh, because that's just psychological that let's take a self a little rest. Now, after that, the next two, three days are called Princess Days where we say, okay, just let's take it easy. Don't start unnecessarily, you know, if you're going to work, maybe take a day off, a day or two. Again, uh, you could actually go back to work the next day. However, two days should be good enough because our embryos implant by that stage. After that, as I said, everything is so microscopic that we really can't expect any symptoms to come. So a lot of people will Google, it's natural to do that. Are we getting any symptoms? You know, am I getting any symptoms of pregnancy? Am I feeling any nausea? If I'm feeling abdominal pain, is that a good sign? Is it a bad sign? So uh, just to clarify, there are absolutely non-specific symptoms. You know, sometimes you would have a lot of cramping pain happening a week after, uh, you know, the uh, embryo transfer which is actually when the implantation bleeding also sometimes happens. So people tend to freak out. They feel, oh my God, I'm having this pain. Is it a sign that I'm, you know, I'm going to have a cycle uh, impending? However, uh, with all uh, the data that we have, it's very clear that those symptoms are very non-specific. You could have pain and it could be a sign of a cycle. However, very, very uh, commonly, it could be very easily a sign of early pregnancy itself. So broadly, what we suggest is that any symptom, you know, because we're going to test in IVF right after 10 to 12 days post transfer, it's too early from a natural pregnancy where people test much later, you know. So it's too early for us to be expecting any symptoms because we are still in our fourth week of pregnancy. We're not even four weeks plus and therefore any symptoms could be negative. So if you have any spotting, then we say it's definitely a matter of concern. You must report to your doctor. At the same time, a lot of bleeding that or spotting that happens while you're on the hormone support could actually be a healthy sign because uh, a lot of times it is implantation bleeding because when you're post embryo transfer, you're actually on a lot of hormones, you're on a lot of estrogen, progesterone, 
uh, you know, whether it's oral, vaginal, some people are even on injectable progesterons. So um, even if there is a negative pregnancy, it's very unlikely that you're going to have, you know, some kind of a bleeding happening because that would happen only if you were to stop the medicines. And therefore, a lot of times when people have spotting post transfer, actually speaking, the beta HG comes positive. So what I'm trying to say is that all symptoms are so non-specific that please stop googling about them, stop worrying about them. Of course, if you have very typical signs of nausea, we would consider that healthy. At the same time, it could just be all the hormones that you're also taking, which could be bringing those symptoms. So we really can't expect anything. It's a terrible waiting time of that 10-12 days before we do the test and we get to know whether the embryo has actually implanted or not. But at that time, the most important thing is to keep our optimism high, you know, not be negative, keep meditating, keep, keep you know, our stress levels low, because ultimately the first thing that will confirm pregnancy is going to be the blood test. The symptoms, as I said, could be either way. It could be a sign of a cycle. It could very much be a sign of pregnancy, even if you were to have a little mild bleeding. So these are important symptoms to check with your doctor so that if there are some tests to be done, if there are some medicines to be added, it could be done at that stage. But they're not symptoms that we need to really fret about or worry about. We need to be in touch with our doctor uh, or the team who's performed the IVF to know what we should do next. So keep yourself hopes alive uh, till the beta HCG test and uh, do not fret about any symptoms as I said because they could be negative or positive and only the blood test will tell. But let's not worry too much about it. Okay, thank you very much.